Hello, I'm Pierre Luc. Welcome to the MMDAX Preparation Area. Today, I present to you an introduction to painting techniques based on Laraval A81. With a low molecular weight, Laraval A81 has a low viscosity, good leveling power, and high gloss. It is used in the production of varnish from paintings or as a binder for various paints, especially for retouching. I will show you two painting techniques that use this resin as a binder, and I will use ethanol as a solvent. The first will be the mixture of 20% Laurapal in ethanol with dry pigments. The second technique will use the Gambrin conservation colors. After a short demonstration with metal samples, I will use the Gambrin conservation colors to camouflage them out. I will proceed to the demonstration with the dry pigments. For this step, I'm going to try a color scheme with the green of the gloves I'm wearing. I will use 20% Laropal in ethanol as the binder. In 20% ethanol, Laropal provides a glossy finish. It is easy to control the gloss level of the paint by decreasing the percentage of resin in the solvent. The drying time of this paint is very fast, as soon as the solvent has evaporated, the paint is dry. Therefore, there is no outgassing period after the paint has dried, unlike most commonly paints and primers. Once the paint is dry, it is always possible to reactivate it with solvent. This feature is very practical since you can keep a palette of paint containing colors that you have been developed and activate them for touch-ups or resume work where you left off. I add titanium white pigments to lighten the green. When I add different pigments to develop a color, I add them on the side of my original color to preserve it in case I need to go back to it. I will now apply the color to aluminum, brass, and steel samples. The paint easily covers the surface in one coat since I incorporated enough pigments to make it opaque. I present here the Gamblin Conservation Colors. They can be purchased in pan sets or in 15 ml bottles. Like the paint we saw in the previous demonstration, this paint only has two ingredients, Laropal A81 and pigments. The difference is the very high concentration of pigments, which is achieved through an industrial manufacturing process. Since it contains Laraval, this paint can be activated simply with a solvent and will give a very mate finish when it dries. It's easy to add gloss by working the color with a Laraval solution like the one we used earlier. Here are the samples once dried. 
You can see the difference in finishes between a 20% load of Laropal with pigments in glossy green and the Gamblin Conservation colors in mate red. After 5 minutes, the solvent has evaporated and the paint is completely dry. I will scrape the surface with the plastic spatula to demonstrate its excellent addition. Despite its resistance to friction, this paint is completely reversible with a solvent as mild as ethanol. We are going to use the Gamblin Conservation Color to camouflage a mount for a drum bear, an artwork from Louis Makitouk. This pyroxenite stone sculpture rests on two legs. To go on display, it needs additional support to secure its precarious balance. I cover the artwork with Dartec to protect it during the painting process. The mount I will paint is made with quarter-inch half-round brass stock with an epoxy interface that fit the contour of the object. I start applying the colors that seems to me dominant in the work. When I subsequently apply the other colors, they will mix with this base coat bringing richness and depth to the color. Gamblin Conservation Colors pan sets work a bit like watercolors. Simply fill your brush with solvent to liquefy the paint and apply it afterward. Now that I've applied the base coat in green, I can make my color more complex by incorporating dark or bright in the form of textures to mimic the stone. I installed the mount on a temporary base covered with mylar in order to continue painting it. This base will also be useful when installing the object. The sculpture is positioned with the base and once the position is determined, the object and the mount are removed and then drilled through the existing hole to locate the anchor of the mount on the pedestal at the exact location that was chosen. Once the color sheen seems to work, I do a fit test to see if I can move to the padding step. For this mount, I chose acrylic adhesive backed sued polyethylene. This material is available in 7 different colors, which offers more options to match the padding to the mount. Another advantage of this padding is that it is very thin. It easily conforms to the angles and tight curves of the surface of my epoxy casting that follow the contour of the object.
choice of finish for a mount depends on several aesthetic factors, such as the context of presentation, the integrity of the artwork, and the function of the mount itself. These choices belong to institutions and are generally guided by the experience they want to offer visitors. The MN back having a large collection of Inuit art, we have chosen to treat the mounts in the same way for the pieces of this particular collection. Since these work often have the characteristic of being in precarious balance, an apparent support would break part of the magic that emanates from the work. This is why we have chosen to camouflage the mount intent for the work in this collection. Thank you everyone for watching my presentation. I'll do my best to answer your questions. I will certainly also learn from you.